Now this workflow hack is going to involve mixing and this has to do particularly with parallel processing. And most often when you're parallel processing sounds in live, you're probably using return tracks, which we have down here at the bottom of the arrangement window. And for example, in this uh, song file I've put together, we've got a simple drum loop and then a chord stab that's hitting rhythmically along with the drums. And if I wanted to add an effect to the stabs, because it's sounding a little dry right now, I could either go to my browser, find an audio effect, drag and drop it right onto the track, or my other option is to put an audio effect on a return track and use the send level to send it through. Now there's a difference between doing these two things. If I have an effect directly on the track, we call that using an insert effect. But if I'm using a return track and I'm using the send to send a copy of the signal over to the return, we call it using an aux effect or using a parallel process. So let's try that first. This is, like I said, often how you would do it if you're using live. So we'll turn up the send level, effectively sending a copy of this chord sound, this chord stab, over to the return track, which is containing this ping pong delay. And generally speaking, when you're using a return track with an effect on it, you're gonna leave the effects dry wet setting at 100% wet. So let's go back to the stabs track for a second. Let's turn the send level all the way down. And now let's add an insert effect. And actually, why don't we use the same exact ping pong delay? So I'll just copy and paste it. I'm just gonna option drag it onto the stabs track. So now we have a ping pong delay right on the track. We're using this in essence as a insert effect. We're not using it any longer as a parallel effect or an auxiliary effect. So now notice that I have the settings here. I have the dry wet at 100% wet. We no longer hear the dry. If I bring the dry wet back to zero, we only hear the dry. And anywhere in between, we're gonna hear a combination of those two. But there is a slight downside to using insert effects like this, particularly if your insert effect has a dry wet control. And that is that as we turn up the dry wet, we start to lose the dry signal to make way or give more space to the wet. So you can think of this almost like a crossfader. We're crossfading out the dry and we're fading in the wet and vice versa if we go down the other way. So a workaround for that, another way that we can kind of parallel process here is to take the effect, even if it's just a single effect, we can still group it into a rack. I can do that by pressing Command G or Control G. The other thing I can do is right click on the top of the effect and you can see here we have an option to group it. And once I've done that, I've taken this single effect and we've put it inside an audio effect rack. Now remember, audio effect racks, if we click here on this chain view button, they contain chains. Now in this case, because we only have a single audio effect, we have a single chain. And if I play it back, we're hearing one version of this chord stab signal going through this 100% wet ping pong delay. But what we can do is, let's go down to where it says drop audio effects here in the chain view area. And if I control click or right click, we can create a chain. And this chain, as you can see, is totally blank. It doesn't have any effects on it. It's telling me to drop audio effects here. Well, I'm not gonna do that because we've already got an audio effect on this one. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these two different chains as a dry chain and a wet chain. So let's rename them accordingly. This will be dry because we have no effect. This will be wet because we have the delay and the delay is also set to 100% wet. So let's play it back. So now what we're hearing is an even blend of both the dry signal and the wet signal. We haven't lost any of the dry, we still have the wet in there, and we can control their levels independently by using these two chain levels here. So if the wet's a little bit too much, maybe it's just a little bit too loud, we can just dial it back a bit. We'll just turn the volume of that chain down. But we're making these volume changes without losing any of our dry signal. We still have that nice strong presence of the dry stab sound. So two cool things about this technique. One is, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to give us this independent volume control over the dry level and the wet level. So we can use this with any effect that does contain a dry wet dial. Just make sure you turn the dry wet to 100% so that on the wet chain you're only hearing wet signal. But the other benefit here is we can make any effect have sort of a dry wet dial. We're kind of making our own here. So even if an effect doesn't have a dry wet control and we want to have some balance over the dry signal and the wet signal, we can absolutely do that using this technique. 
So I hope this has been helpful. Try it out on a variety of different effects to give yourself a little bit of parallel processing flexibility in your mixes. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.